Welcome back to Fallout London, a new DLC size mod, which has become so popular that many people think it's actually an official downloadable content that Bethesda has made, like a Fallout spin-off title based in London. So today we're going to be taking a look at the quality and scale of Fallout London, which now also has a release date of April 23rd, 2024. So it's only a few more months away and it's even going to get released alongside the new Fallout TV series and potentially Bethesda's next gen update for Fallout 4. But just to be absolutely clear, Fallout London is a fan-made mod. These guys are making it for free. So if you want to help support them, hit the like button and make sure you tell your friends about it. Now let's take a look at how the development's going and what we can expect from Fallout London. Greetings and welcome to the latest update for Fallout London. This will be our most significant update to date. It looks like the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben have been turned into a fortress. Revealing more than ever before about what we have been working hard on for the past few years laying out the path to release and announcing our official release date. Over the past three years, a core team of at least 50 people spread over each core department have spent tens of thousands of hours- Was that a trebuchet? On the hard graft and development of the game-sized mod Fallout London, with over 200 individuals contributing in some way to its completion. After all this hard work, this guy running with the flag is like the Orokai from Lord of the Rings. The game is now at a functional content complete stage. So that means they finished the game entirely. However, due to some unforeseen delays, we have not completed the polish and testing we want to do before release. I'm actually really impressed that they have a quality testing phase on a fan made mod. With these unforeseen changes, we wish to give you a taste of everything that is upcoming to show you all the hard work we've been doing. It's like a dragon. <laughs> Building like the London. Bat signal. In the radioactive playground of London, our world spaces and level design aren't just blueprints. They're the walls in which players graffiti their own tales. We're not building mere levels. We're in fact crafting London from the ground up. Recognizable. Changed. Warped. A world where every step shapes your legend, and where the landscape is as deadly as the tales you choose to tell. The game setting includes 15 boroughs of London to openly explore. We begin with areas such as the leaf. This is actually really cool because I was already thinking to myself, I recognize some of those locations from living in London for several years now. And here we have all of the locations in London that they're gonna be putting in the game. We begin with areas such as the leafy suburbs of Bromley with its 261 cells, the trendy canal paths of Camden with 305 cells. So this is legitimately Camden Bridge. There's a lock here, just like in real life. Camden Lock is a marketplace now. And this picture is taken, I think, from where Weatherspoon's pub is. These buildings are slightly different, but still. Oh, steel and glass towers in the financial hub of the city of London, boasting Amazing. 139 cells. 283 cells make up the ruined hellscape of Croydon. What happened to Croydon? What does Croydon look like? Croydon the looks like an absolute hellscape slum. of Croydon. Not much change there, huh? Okay. Eastminster, a new compact district with exactly 100 cells that blends history and modernity. Interesting. The home to the echoes of naval. This is the Cutty Sark. It's like a really old tea ship used in Victorian time. You can go in here and walk underneath the Thames. Greenwich is also very famous because it's where GMT, the time zone where London is, originates from. The home to the echoes of naval stories is Greenwich, with its maritime charm with 460 cells. Oh, they've got some kind of pirate themed faction there. Hackney, with its vibrant racing heart of 151 cells. Islington's cultural enclave, which offers 102 cells of eclectic charm. The cramped ruins of Lambeth, with 175. Lewisham, the urban mosaic, a 182 cell canvas of diversity. Newham, a dynamic district with 109 cells, where radiation change is the only constant. Dude, there's- they've- oh my god. The concentration of detail and effort and lore and story and factions that have gone into each one of these unique individual locations 
you could this could just be a real game and you've got to realize the density within these cells as well it's so clustered and condensed historic streets of Southwark with 437 cells where every yeah. corner whispers tales of yore tower hamlet's 368 cells of where power and history collide the open parkland of wandsworth and its 388 cells that looks like some kind of nutty arena from the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, but the Fallout version of it. 388 cells and Westminster, the political epicenter boasting 304 cells. Creating these areas has required concepting, design, testing, and onerous nav meshing to ensure they produce a cohesive world that is also engaging for exploration and combat. It's been lovingly recreated. Is that the Millennium Dome? That looks like the dome. But with a combined total of 3,764 cells. Yeah, the Millennium Dome's just here. This is the Isle of Dogs. This is Canary Wharf. Then you've got Tower Bridge here, South Bank, where the Millennium Eye is going to be. You can see that they've, they've kind of condensed the London River into this. It works beautifully. Lock, stock, and barrel. Amongst these eclectic London boroughs, are an additional mix of areas, with a final total of 11 fascinatingly diverse world spaces, 337 detailed interior cells, 48 of which are the scale of the base game's Corvega factory. 337 detailed interiors? That's more locations than Fallout 4. Fallout 4 has 325 marked locations, but obviously not interior spaces are different, but just this has been made for free and a total of seven unique settlements for you to build to your heart's content they've even the done total that total area covered by our world is equivalent to the base game commonwealth and far harbor dlc combined they made a new fallout game dude this is insane this isn't just like a mod the size of a dlc it's the mod the size of a game this lofty world space size makes fallout london one of the largest mods for fallout 4 to date this is a game you've made a, a new 3D. game populating this huge area has required the creation and adaptation of an enormous number of 3d assets from the desolate urban sprawl to the tattered armor shaping your character's attire wow the eerie glow of mutated foliage That's and the cool. ominous cyber pigeons desecrating forgotten statues Dude, there's literally a conspiracy theory about pigeons being robots spying on us. Have you ever seen a dead pigeon? I live in London. I've not. They're spy pigeons. Each element breathes life into the panorama of old blight. What is that? Whilst much base content has been reskinned or tweaked to fit a British setting, a great number of items have been made from scratch and new animations developed to support them. They include custom weapons. The flintlock weaponry. This is the DP-27. And this is also a light machine gun where the magazine's fed on top. Clothes. Races. 514 clothes. 121 weapons. When Starfield came out, I made a wiki for Starfield and they've literally made more weapons. Races. Oh, they have 29 races? What races do they have in the game? That's a goal. London-specific architectural kits, and yeah. of course, finely brewed pots of tea. It also includes many hundreds of miscellaneous assets, from iconic London buses to the humble three-pin plug to the extra mysterious Cthulhu doll. Every asset meticulously crafted. This looks like some kind of puzzle, and this is the Son of Man painting. I'm really interested why that's there our setting immerses players in a world rich with roleplay options our assets let the player explore a new reality where each detail beckons inviting you to forge your own path and truly feel the pulse of the unknown that is incredible 2d our 2d artists have produced a plethora of artwork to populate the world with London-centric content. New I noticed this all being new, but really fits the Fallout theme. Signage, posters, graffiti, comic covers, Bansky. logos, and textures 
help build a believable future London for you to get immersed in. In addition, we have overhauled the user interface with our Attaboy alternative to the Pit Boy, which includes custom animation. No way. Look at that. The scientists are examining your attributes. What are their findings? This is the character creation menu. Here we see one of the perks called Four Eyes. You're certainly not blind, but you're getting close. You get plus one perception when you're wearing glasses, but have minus one without them. Boy, which includes custom animations for stats, perks, and quests based on the UK's protect and survive family. So they've got their own Voltec version in the UK, which I love. Music. Fallout London sports a completely new and unique OST, covering all music found in the base game while adding more. It includes a completely new and overhauled soundscape, ambience and gameplay soundtrack, and features three new radio stations you can tune into. Whether you are feeling classy on the BBM, we interrupt this monologue to bring you a stunning development. Or are after some American classics with Crystal Palace Radio. Hello to all you wonderful listeners. Or just after some good old-fashioned anarchy in the UK, on the mend with Dan Bull. That was freshly squeezed with Animal Soul. New audio is all part of making our adaptation feel true to London, whilst also integrating seamlessly into the style of the Fallout universe. Our full OST is also available early for you to listen to on our YouTube channel. Much yes. of Fallout 4's acclaim stems from its distinctive mechanics, such as settlements, and we've elevated that legacy with our additions. The sewer looks nightmarish. Additions, including a revamped crafting system for ammo, and T, an overhauled perk and dialogue system. So you've got luck trainer, confirmed bachelor, sneering imperialist. <laughs> Skill and perk checks in dialogue. My Good. word against yours, eh? Innovative fast travel options, including trains, taxis, and boats. It's too. Mate, they're just. Oh, Starfield doesn't have a single transport option, and you're telling me they have trains? Boats and cars. I don't know if they're actually drivable, but like, look, you're telling me I can just jump on this boat and go down the Thames and... Too risky to transport the three of us across such choppy waters. Dynamic weathers, new smoking mechanism. We've got an irradiated area where we have our radiation suit and it looks like our pit boy is actually on our waist. Cigarette card, wild animal number 13. So these are collectibles. Mechanism, playable guitars. Unique uniques. Unique uniques. Yes, that's what I really missed in Starfield. Like proper unique weapons that you can't get anywhere else. And there's a unique 3D model. The Queen's Gambit. Chance to stagger. It even has unique mods. New player animations, such as ladder climbing and swimming. With a noteworthy addition, cow milking. Good grief. Quests. Okay. The story and quest lines of the game have entailed some of the greatest amount of work in the mod, involving writers, scripters, voice actors, and audio engineers to produce a breathtaking array of content. Fallout Just this character alone tells me some story of this is a faction. They're in the underground. They're using cricket bats. Like, I, I want to know more. It just seems like it seems like it's more grounded in its environment and who these people are living in London. And it's also wacky in a Fallout kind of way, and I felt like I missed that in Starfleet. Fallout London boasts a collection of 53 new main quests in and around the city. These engaging narratives offer various choices and challenges in the Wayfarer's journey to shape the future of all Blighty. It also looks like there's different factions and actual choices in this game. Self-contained adventures to larger quest lines, players have plenty to uncover outside of their main journey, with a total of 35 side quests. 25 new faction quests intricately tied to the various groups you'll encounter across the city. These quests offer unique challenges and storylines, allowing players to deeply engage with the factions and shape the course of their journey. This Uncover cool. artifacts, tie up loose ends, and solve mysteries in the bustling world of Fallout London, with 64 miscellaneous quests to enhance your experience. 
On their travels, players may find themselves entangled in the bitter conflict unfolding on the streets of East London. With 16 branching quests, the journey is rich with challenges and intrigue, all seamlessly intertwined with the main quest line. There are they're all intertwined in the main quest line and they have gang warfare. Look, they've built tanks. Like, they've so much effort. There are seven companions you are able to recruit in the game, including one very British best boy, who we are sure will charm Churchill? players just as much as dog meat. Five no of the companions are more human ish. Human ish. Interesting. And what is all this gold? Voiced with detailed relationship levels. Shall we venture out again, matey? branching relationship-based dialogue with the player, commentary on the world and events, and their own companion quests. In total, there are just over 90,000 recorded dialogue lines in the game. Oh my god. Starfield had like 250,000 lines of recorded dialogue. This is a fan-made mod with 90,000. Which is about one and a half times the size of Fallout New Vegas or Skyrim, and just shy of that found in Fallout 4. However, their protagonist was voiced, and ours is, as the community preferred, silent. So, wait, wait, wait. So, yeah, because Fallout 4 had a talking protagonist. But since the main protagonist in Fallout London doesn't speak, that means that, overall, Fallout London just has more dialogue than Fallout 4. Then gameplay dialogue. Our ethos has always been to release when the game is truly ready. Our community stresses avoiding a buggy release like some of our predecessors, and we are committed to a game we can all be proud of for everyone's enjoyment. Now, we've set a specific release date. The release date for Fallout London will be St. George's Day, the 23rd of April, 2024. Very As British. you know, we've consistently operated in quarters, so we're just one quarter over our plans. Close, but no cigar. And for that, we apologize. However, rest assured, anticipate our arrival at the end of the first quarter perfectly aligning with the debut of the new Fallout TV series to truly get you in the mood. In the coming months, we'll focus on refining, rigorous testing, and balancing to meet the high standards you expect. All of the team are done with their main tasks now and fully support this effort, and we've set a reasonable deadline to ensure careful completion aligning with your expectations. So there we are, Fallout London looks insane. We don't know when Fallout 5 is coming out, but we know it's after the Elder Scrolls 6, and we know that is several years away. So Fallout London is going to be the next Fallout game, even though it is fan-made, it looks incredible. And I think it may be as big as Fallout 5. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see that. It's just so densely compacted with everything in it that you'd expect from Fallout London. And it's hard not to look at this and just think, oh man, this, this is the next Fallout game, but it's made by fan. But just everything about it seems to be so high end and I cannot wait to play it. Drop a like on the video if you're excited. But let me know in the comments what you're most excited to explore in this game because man, the quests and just experiencing those factions sounds incredible to me.